This is KT Bradford with GottaBeMobile.com, and this is my video review of the Nook tablet, which uh, just was supposed to come out later this week, but actually was available in stores yesterday. And so I'm going to take you on a quick look through it. Um, so as you can see, there, there's two tablets sitting here, but actually only one of them is the Nook tablet. This right here is the Nook Color, which you can tell if you can read the screen. Um, so this was basically just to demonstrate how similar Nook tablet and the Nook Color are. On the outside, they're almost identical. Um, the Nook tablet obviously has a bit of a different color. It's just a little bit lighter, but overall, in terms of dimensions, in terms of you know, like here the little the little Nook, I guess was what they call this, and the stylized end button. These are pretty much the same on the outside. The only outer difference that you are going to notice is that the Nook tablet here is just a little bit lighter than the Nook color, which is very good. This Nook color is a little bit too heavy, so it's like this is actually pretty much the, the right weight for this size tablet, so really like it quite a lot. Um, here we have this little strip, and this strip is uh, not here on the Nook color, and this basically puts up front, what is a Nook tablet for? It's for books, and for reading your magazines and newspapers, and watching movies, and listening to music, and playing with your apps. That's what all those things are there for. And when you tap them to open them, they bring up, you know, just like little window overlays to give you some information. Mostly it points to shopping because Barnes & Noble does want you to go shopping for things. But then here we have movie and TV apps and these are just, you know, a collection of apps under that theme, which is nice to have all in one place. And then music, again, apps on a theme. And then you have your apps, and these also all go right to your library as well as also pointing you toward buying other apps, but you can go right into your library of apps right there. And one of the things that's also different here is once you're um, somewhere other than the home screen, on the Nook Color, if you tap the home screen button, it would just take you right back there. But here on the Nook Tablet, if you tap the N, it actually brings up this menu, which was brought up by tapping this before. And so it has all the same things except for now it's had an added home screen button so you can go back to home. This isn't really that big a deal but it does keep tripping me up because I'm so used to be just being able to tap the N and go home as I did with the uh, with the Nook Color. So there's that. Um, also here on the home screen under the more there's there's more under the more drop down which is really nice and I am signed in uh, to Netflix and so I don't know why it says I'm not signed in but essentially the idea here is you're going to be getting some recommendations for other movies and TV shows that you might like perhaps based on what you've been watching on the device before. I've only watched a couple of shows so that might be why. Another thing that's slightly different is uh, if you go into the apps area on the Nook Color, um, apps are sort of a, a separate thing but here, apps are now incorporated into the library along with everything else. So you see we've got books, magazine, newspapers, don't have any newspaper subscriptions, and apps. Now what's different on the inside of the Nook tablet versus the Nook Color is that the Nook tablet has a dual core processor and it also has a um, one gigabyte of RAM. So that means that it's going to be able to, it's a little bit snappier basically and um, games are going to play a little smoother if they're very intense. Angry Birds is not that intense so you can't really see it. Um, web pages are actually loading a little bit faster on this versus the uh, Nook Color and and overall, things are just really snappier, like moving it between screens and whatnot. It's just like a just that little bit faster you really like. But one way to like see the, the difference is we're here on the Wikipedia page for Mount Vesuvius, and you will understand why. I'm, I was looking at this Wikipedia page, um, and so this is the full Wikipedia as opposed to um, the mobile version of the Wikipedia. Now watch as I zoom in and out. This is the Nook color, remember. Uh, now check out what happens when I do that on the tablet. See, it's much smoother. It isn't sort of like jerking up and down. It's just going in and out really smoothly. Nice smooth scrolling. Scrolling over here is a little bit jumpier. Um, now this also could be due to just browser, you know, the browser being a little bit better. But it also, I think, has something to do with the actual, you know, guts of the Nook the tablet, um, having that dual core processor in there is going to be very good. And it's going to mean that when developers start making more intense applications for 
the Nook, that this is going to be able to handle it much better than the Nook Color is going to be able to handle it. So if you're purchasing something now that you hope to, to last for a little while and you want to do more with it than just read, then perhaps the Nook Tablet is better for you. But if you're more of a reader and this is sort of incidental to you, you're, you're not really going to be playing a lot of apps that are games, you're not going to be doing a lot of web surfing on this, then that's not really going to affect your choice very much. And uh, the Nook Color is now $199. So there's that. There's that. Now, if you're wondering about the uh, the book experience on the Nook tablet as opposed to the Nook Color, there's actually not a lot of difference. Um, basically, they both change with a tap. You can swipe, you can tap. Um, tapping in the middle brings up uh, your options there. So, and you have all pretty much all the same options that you had before, um, except for now you have this little Find button and Share. And so, there's Nook Friends. That's all in here. So you're going to be having, you're going to have the same reading experience on the Nook tablet as you had on the Nook Color, pretty much. All right. So with the Nook tablet, we have here, you know, just a, a nice seven-inch screen. This is an IPS display. It has really good viewing angles, which I'm not entirely sure if you can, um, you know, really tell from the video, but it does. Uh, the nice rounded edges, I think, are probably one of the things I like about it most because it makes it so comfortable to hold. And this is, again, the same as in the color. Um, the back has a nice soft touch feel to it, and here's the speaker down here. Um, this speaker pumps out actually pretty decent sound, and I will, I'll play something for you later. And then under here, um, this is where you're going to find the, the SD card slot. Um, but, you know, just, it's, I wouldn't call this design basic. What I would call it is, um, minimal and elegant. That is how I would describe it. And, um, it just feels really good in the hand. Holding this and holding the no color in the other hand, this definitely feels a lot lighter. I was reading with this, um, on the train and most of the day today, also just doing some stuff like, you know, playing around with spring pad and, and playing some Sudoku. And it just, you know, it's, it's light enough. It feels really good in the hand. And it's nice that, you know, when you hold it, it just, you know, fits and you can either swipe or tap to turn pages. It just feels very good. Now you can hear it. Now Aero's Rio does have um, some advantages because you, as you look you can see that it, it scrolls really smoothly around and Angry Birds Rio has some nice like different elements like stuff that's on different axes so as you scroll around you can see how well the engine uh, works it. So you know that dual core processor it's doing really well with Angry Birds. Let's check out Netflix because this is, again, one of the big things that everybody was very excited about was the inclusion of Netflix and Hulu Plus. So let's just see um, how it looks. So let's see. Recently watched. Got some Doctor Who going on up here. But I'm going to... Now, what I really like, the Netflix app um, has, you know, it's a it's an experience that's actually going to be really familiar to you if you have Google TV, because this is basically how the Google TV thing is laid out, where you have, you know, like your queue and the top 10 and the stuff that you recently watched and, and whatnot. And so then you have, you know, scrolling up and down, giving you some suggestions for things. If you like this, maybe you'll like that. Um, new arrivals, whatnot. And then within each of these roles... Uh, rows you can scroll. So let's scroll through our instant queue again because I'm looking for Doctor Who. Alright, and so if we tap here, then this will come up, and again, we're going to see the uh, the back button, the menu, whatnot, as well as the player controls. I'm trying to get to a little scene with some action. Um, so this is an HD, and it actually looks really good. And even though the screen is glossy, um, it still is actually a really pleasant viewing experience. So you're going to be holding this pretty close. Um, when you when you watch things, so it's good to have with headphones, but the the sound is pretty good too. And as you can see, I had it up on 100% volume, and um, is okay. And very good colors, smooth frame rates. We are not seeing you know any kind of weird dark frames, not seeing any kind of weird pixelation. Uh, just a very nice experience.
So that's my video review of the Nook tablet and um, just breaking it down for you again here at the end. Uh, the things I like about this are the same things that I liked about the Nook color. It's very, it's very light. Um, it's nice to hold in the hand thanks to the curved sides. Um, it's fast. Uh, has that nice dual core processor as you can see as I'm turning pages here is that even though there's you know some nice complex little 3D graphics going on it is still very fast and it's very smooth. Um, playing video is great, playing games is great, reading is great, wonderful screen with nice uh, wide viewing angles, not a lot of glare, there's some but not a lot and just really easy on the eyes. It doesn't even have to be up at full brightness to be comfortable and you can adjust the brightness as you're in books and whatnot. So you know a lot of things that are really good about this and the price is really nice. Now, just to point out why this is only $249, besides the fact that Barnes & Noble is trying to be competitive, is that this is not a full-fledged tablet. The Nook tablet is basically an e-reader tablet with benefits. So you're going to have some apps, you're not going to have them all. You are going to be able to read books and read magazines and have like all the goodies that come with this. Um, one thing I didn't show you here is just children's books, which again is more goodies, especially if you're a parent. It's really nice to be able to read books with your kids. So you have a lot of like software ecosystem goodies, but a pared down tablet experience. There's no Bluetooth here. There's no GPS. There's only Wi-Fi. There's no 3G. There are no cameras, anything like that. For $249, I think this is still one of the best tablet values in the business. Um, if you want to spend a little bit less, the no color is now $199 instead of $249, but I think that if you're buying new, if you're buying one of these devices for the first time, I think that you should definitely go for the Nook tablet because it is it's going to be more future proof than the color because it has a faster processor so when more intense applications come along they're going to run better on this you're going to be watching video on this um, and you're going to be doing some multitasking on this and Android does make that possible so if you're buying new right now I would suggest spend the extra fifty dollars get the Nook tablet and the same goes for comparison with the Kindle Fire the Kindle Fire's hardware is not this nice and though the Kindle does have some things that the Nook tablet does not, including um, the ability to, to download Amazon um, video onto here, I, I don't think that that's really actually that big of a deal when you consider just how nice this tablet is and it has most of the same features and you're going to have Netflix and you're going to have Hulu Plus. So I say go ahead, go for the Nook tablet over the Kindle Fire. That is that is my recommendation for this. This has been KT Bradford with GottaBeMobile.com here reviewing the Nook tablet from Barnes & Noble.